Hi, friends. Very unprofessional of me because I'm still eating. Hi, everyone. So thank you guys for coming to this webinar. I've got so much good stuff for you guys today. Get excited. But before we get started, maybe we can just get acquainted a little bit. Maybe you guys can tell me where you're from, what's your name, and what are you excited? What are you struggling with right now in terms of your pricing? And what are you excited to learn? Um, ooh, Melanie, excited to learn. I am so excited to show you guys all that I've prepared for you guys. I would have to say, give you guys a little heads up, it's going to be a little bit more math heavy than you are usually used to in you know working in the lash industry. But I have faith in you guys. It won't be too hard. I'll guide you guys through it. Hmm. Um, Pauline, you have to leave at 540. Well, Pauline, make sure that you check back with us because at today, at the end of this webinar, we are going to have a discount code for a special new product launch. Um, so this webinar is going to be about an hour. And then after that, we're going to do a little bit of Q&A in case you guys just want to hang out with me a little bit. We can brainstorm a little bit because it's always good to sometimes ask the questions that you want to ask, you know? Hi, Carol. I'm super excited to learn. I have my notepads ready. <laughs> well, you guys are going to need it. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. You're going to need it. You probably want to take a bunch of screenshots. You probably want to take a bunch of notes. Um, it's going to be one of those things that you're going to have to revisit a few times. You might not get it right the first time. You might, it might not all make sense to you immediately, but I highly encourage you guys to have this, save this, save the replay and watch it as often as you need to. Whenever you're thinking about resetting your prices, whenever you have some question, you can always come back and revisit this webinar. And I hope that it would be helpful. And then we probably won't do another one until there's some breakthrough that I go through in pricing that I need to share with you guys. Otherwise, I feel like in terms of pricing and price setting, it's a pretty evergreen strategy. So what that means is that it's going to be the same strategy all throughout for a really long time. I don't really see any reason why it would change because the formula that I'm sharing with you guys today, it's a foolproof formula. And all you need to do is tweak the numbers and plug in whatever you need to plug in in order to find out your ideal price. All right. So we got a lot of you guys on already without further ado, I am going to get this started. All right. So in going forward, if you guys have any questions, you can pop it in the Q and a section, but if you guys just wanted to chat, you can chat on the chat part. Um, the Q and a Q and a part is going to be for me to see, and I won't be answering all the questions throughout the PowerPoint. I will save any questions at the end of it. Um, but if anything is relevant to the topic that I'm talking about or the slide that I'm talking about in that moment, I will discuss that question. Otherwise I will be doing a more in-depth Q and a at the end. Sounds good. Are you guys ready to get started? Give me a thumbs up, a heart, something, any emoji to keep your girl fueled because I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> All right. So for now, I'm going to share with you guys my screen and we're going to get started on this PowerPoint. Thank you guys so much for spending your Thursday afternoon with me. All right. So I'm going to present the PowerPoint. Oh, what is happening? Why wouldn't it let me present? Oh, there it is. Present. I've overworked Canva so much that it's literally on like overdrive. So I want to make sure that it's okay. Everything is showing up because as you guys can see right now, it's glitching and it's not showing. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's get back to the beginning, shall we? Oh my Lord. All right. Bear with me guys. Bear with me through this technical difficulties of my 36 slides. Okay. We're almost there. You got this Canva. You got this. Oh, hi Tasha. You're new from the industry. So today 
I hope to help you set your business in the right foot because I think a lot of us don't get these kind of information when we first start off. So um, in business, if you don't start off the right way, then you want to recorrect it. It always becomes a little bit more difficult in the future. So I'm so happy that you found yourself here and get started with us on your very first price setting workshop. Um, okay, give me one second. Phil. I'm just waiting for, there we go. Okay, we're good. I can't pose. Sorry, guys. Okay, so before we get started, these are the things that you guys are gonna need. Today, if you wanna follow along in the instruction and the exercises that we're doing today, you will need a calculator, but if not, you're definitely gonna need a pen and you're going to um, need a notebook and also grab some water because we're gonna be hanging out in the next hour. Stay hydrated. At any given time, please feel free to take a um, snapshot, take a picture, post it on your Instagram and tag us, untamed.artistry and hashtag Lash Nerds so that we can share with the community as well. And you can show people what you've learned today. All right. I'm going to give you guys just maybe a minute or so to grab everything you need in case you don't have it, and then we'll get started. It's not Monday, but it's still a day for matcha. Hi, Courtney. You're so lost with where to set your prices. Well, after today, you're going to be so not lost that you're gonna can, you can basically teach all your friends and all your lash buddies and your lash BFFs how to set their prices because it's that easy. Like after one workshop today, I guarantee you by the end of this, you can teach other people how to set your prices. Okay. Now I'm going to assume that you guys all got your calculators ready and you also have your water, your pen, your notebook. We're going to get started. Okay. First, I want you guys to watch this video. Is that you? Because those of you might have seen this video on our webinar, um, but this is the process I believe a lot, a lot of artists find themselves in when they are trying to do um, their price setting. The reason why it's because there's just not enough information out there. So when you're deciding your prices, I bet here are some of the common questions that you tend to ask yourself. You ask yourself the question of how long have I been in the industry for? How much are my competitor charging? How much is your lash idol? Like how much did they tell you to charge? And also how much would you pay for the service? Now, this is the question that a lot of us always ask. We always come back to this where how much would I pay for it? You know, and I'm going to show you guys how a well asked question is half answer. It's one of my favorite quote. Don't know who's by and I credit that to somebody. Um, but I truly do believe in that that having good business strategies and it's being a good decision maker. And I talk about this many times in my Matcha Monday and part of a price setting is a business decision, right? So it shouldn't be based on emotion and it shouldn't be based on what you are told to do, but rather understanding what you're doing and why you're doing it that way. It's extremely important. Anyone can tell you what prices to charge, but nobody can, you know, know your business the way you know your business. Nobody can strategize your business the way you want to grow your business. Only you can do that. So if people are telling you how much to charge for your services, essentially in a way they're giving you the winning lottery ticket number to a lottery lottery that they've already won. That lottery number isn't going to win you the next lottery, you know, in mine, but the chances are no different than any other set of numbers, you know? So this is why don't just follow what other people say. Instead, here are the questions that I encourage you guys to do ask yourself, as long as Canva wants to slide. <laughs> here are the questions that you should be asking yourself. What are the costs of running a business? You know, you have to understand numbers. As a business owner, you're more than just a lash artist. You know, your artistry matters and that's what helps you attract your clients. But I've always believed that artistry, it's only 30 to 40% of your business the success of your business and the rest of it, it's from 
running a business. And that's understanding your numbers, understand marketing and understanding your growth strategies and all of that. Today, we're going to touch on a small, small piece of all of this other um, important attributes to your bus a successful business. And that's pricing. Next question you need to ask yourself is what type of clientele are you targeting? Now, even within the same city, we hear this very often, right? The market is saturated. You know, there's so many lash artists everywhere, but you don't see Hermes coming into the purse market and say the purse market is saturated. I can charge $10,000 for a purse. That's outrageous and ridiculous. That's not true because obviously there are Hermes that's charging $10,000 for purses, but then there's also all that you can buy a purse for 50 to $60. But the tie and tell that goes into the two different stores are completely different, which is why it's so important for you to understand what type of clientele are you targeting and what would they want to pay and what is, the, what is their price perception, money perception, value perception, beauty perception, all of that is important. Next question is the question that I often ask myself. It's how much do you want to work? Now, I don't you know, contribute to this whole hustle culture, because for me personally, the joy in life, it's enjoying life. It's my freedom. It's my time. I don't want to give up freedom and time for money so I can buy more freedom and time. You see how that's confusing already? It already doesn't make sense. So right from the get-go, in order to prevent yourself from burnout and actually to drive your success, you need to clearly define how much do you want to work? How much do you realistically want to work? And today, when we go through some of those case study, I will show you how you can achieve any prices you want and you can achieve any goals you want as long as you understand your numbers. The next question that you want to also ask yourself is how much money would you like to earn? Because money, it's also not, doesn't weigh equal importance in everybody's life. For me personally, I just want to be able to buy groceries whenever I want to, uh, travel whenever I want to, and I'm pretty happy with that. But maybe for some of you, you got kids to take care of, and maybe you have some really ambitious goals. Maybe you have that Hermes bag that you want to buy. Either way, everybody's goal and how much they want to earn money, it's also different, which is why there is no blanket at one statement saying everyone in the industry should charge $300 for a full set of volume, $250 for you know, hybrid, you know, there is no one size fit all. And that's something you're going to learn with UA. And it's ingrained in every single one of our education content is that one size never fit all. So it's all about understanding the fundamentals. Next one is how much money? Oh, sorry. We've gone to that one already. Um, and what are some of your growth plans? I know for some of you, maybe dabble into lash extensions because that's your hobby. But for a lot of us, we want to be in here for a long time. We want to grow our business. We want to watch it from going home studio all the way to owning a salon, maybe potentially owning your own brand, maybe becoming an educator. All of this are part of your growth plan. Do you have, like, is your pricing considering these growth plans? Have you set your prices up to allow yourself to succeed? to allow yourself to maybe entertain some of these growth plans that you have, because if you haven't, you should. And I'll show you how today. Now, I know this is a kind of a long, um, it seems like we're covering a lot, but we're not going to be going too deep in depth into too many different strategies. Instead today, I wanna to give you guys a very entry level of understanding the most basic fundamental of a full, full proof strategy in um, or a formula actually to price your services. So what we're going to do today is that first I'm going to guide you guys to understand your number. I talked about that earlier. Understanding your numbers as a business owner is absolutely crucial. You don't have to be a mathematician, but you need to at least understanding what your break even point, how much does it cost to run your business, how much money you need to make in order to grow your business and your pricing. It's not really just, you know, a shot in the dark. It should be strategic. And here is the strategy. Next thing is I'm going to show you guys that pricing formula. You're probably going to be taking a lot of picture during that period of time because you want to keep those pictures. Those formulas might seem a little complicated in the beginning, but once you reveal it a couple of times, it will become a lot more clear. So I highly encourage you guys to take some snapshots, take some pictures or write them down in your notebook if you can. Um, that way you can always visit your notes. And then next, I want you guys, I'm going to be introducing you to you guys to my friend, 
Amy. Amy is an arbitrary lash artist I made up to help us understand this formula through multiple case studies. So we're essentially going to revamp Amy's business today and we're going to set some prices with Amy. And Amy's got some audacious goals, let me tell you guys. So are you guys ready? Okay. Lastly, for the last couple of slides, I wanted to touch on a little bit of the other variables. The variables that you might want to start considering if you are three years into your business. Maybe you're at a point where you're happy with your business and your pricing and you understand all these formula, but you just wanted to tweak it a little bit more. You want to increase your margin just a little bit more. These are the variables that you can start considering. So this webinar is not just for the experienced lash artists. We've got, you know, Tasha here who's new to the business and we've got a lot of lash, other lash artists maybe be in the business anywhere between two months to six years. This webinar will be useful for you no matter where you are in your business. And I'm going to show you guys some of the tips for our beginner lash artists and I'm going to share some tips and strategy for our more experienced lash artists. And everyone always asks this question. So I just covered one FAQ that I got all the time. It's how do you raise your prices? We'll cover that a little bit at the end. And then we're going to go into a Q&A. Before the Q&A, I want you guys to stick to it and because UA is launching a new product today. Well, we're actually not launching it to the public. We're only launching it to you guys. What that means is that by attending this webinar and you stick all the way to the end, I'm going to tell you guys what product we're launching and I'm going to give you guys a irresistible deal, a, a promo code that it's going to give you guys 50% off on whatever new product that we're launching, but you have to stick to the end to get this one. Alrighty. Okay. Let's get started. Um, okay. So we are going to go through some numbers today. Here are, here are the terminology that I want you guys to get familiar with as a business owner. And this is just accounting 101, super simple, super basic stuff. These are the numbers that I believe are the most crucial numbers to understand for a lash business. Number one is what are your fixed expenses? And then it will be your variable expenses. And then that will help us understand your break even costs. And then we're going to get to cost per hours. And then the last two are going to be a little bit more advanced. And that's your lifetime client value, as well as your client acquisition costs. So we'll get started with our fixed expenses first. So what is our fixed expenses? So our fixed expenses, it's going to be the expenses are, we have to pay every single month, no matter what happens, no matter if it's COVID or it's Christmas, these expenses are exactly the same every single month. And these are the money that you need to have in order to keep, uh, these are the costs of your money, of your business, to keep your business afloat. So you guys can see, I'm just a little bit nervous today, but stick with me. All right, so your fixed expenses are going to be the expenses that it's going to be the same and consistent every single month. And we have some examples here. We have rent, we have subscriptions, we have met as business in the virtual world now, in the world of internet, for example, um, a lot of our expenses as business owner are now subscription costs that maybe previous business owner never had to consider. Um, but this is a very common cost to run a business in today's world. And then every lash artist should absolutely have insurance and your insurance would usually stay the same for your whole duration of your year. Maybe, you renegotiate the prices every year or so. But when I was getting, um, when I was offering services, my insurance was renegotiated every 12 months. So that depends on how you do it. Um, and then you got to keep your lights on. You got to keep the water running. So there's your utility bills. And then maybe you have loan payment. Maybe some of you are, you know, taking out some loan to help you run this business or start this business. So you got your loan payment. If you're a salon owner and you are going in the salary route, you got salaries to pay and that should be consistent every single month. Now we move on to our variable expenses. Our variable expenses will be, oh no, I skipped the slide. There we go. 
Okay. So your variable expenses are the cost of your business that fluctuates and goes up and down depending on how busy you are and how many clients you have and how much money you're paying. That's why they're considered variable. And a good way to help you determine variable, if you don't know because they vary every single month, is if you've been in business for six months, let's say, or even three months, you just wanna take a look at your last six months expenses, how much they are in each category, and then divide it by the number of months. I'll go into that a little bit later. I hope that makes sense. And here are some of the examples for our variable expenses. Um, they are lash supplies, because you're gonna need those to keep your business running, aftercare packages, education. I list education as a variable expense because I think that you never know which training you wanna take. Maybe there's an educator, maybe there's a type of training that came on the market and you really, really wanna take it in a super last minute and you didn't plan it ahead of time. So that would become your variable. For those of you who are a little bit more OCD like me and like planning ahead, like budgeting and enjoy those type of things, then you can actually put your education as a fixed cost if you just budget the set amount of money that you want to spend a year on education. Let's say if you want to spend $1,200 a year on education, then it will become $100 a month as a fixed cost. You know, And it's up to you as a business owner to make sure that you stay within that budget. And then obviously sometimes you have to get gifts for your clients. Christmas, you're going to be spending a lot more on gifts than you would on otherwise. That's why they're variable. And then taxes. That is going to be variable based on how much money you make. The more money you make, the more you're going to pay taxes. And this is one of those things that many business owners may be failing at is they fail to calculate taxes into their pricing. They're not thinking forward enough and farsighted enough to see that, okay, I want to make $100,000 a year, but girlfriend, you're not going to make $100,000 a year if you just make $100,000 a year because you have to pay taxes. So if you want to net $100,000 a year, you have to consider the amount of taxes that you're going to pay. And that's different from state to state, city to city, province to province. Um, and I'll show you some examples today. And then obviously, if you are a salon owner that has booth rental or you do commission, then the commission will also become variable based on how much client they see every single month. Does that make sense? So that's our fixed expenses and our variable expenses. And these are the category, your money that usually goes out of your business, right? Um, next thing is now we get to this big, big, most important topic that I wanna cover today. If you take anything away from today, it's I want you to take away this concept of break even costs. It's so important for you to understand break even costs because without knowing it and understanding it, then every time you set a price, it becomes a game of chance, whether you're going to be profitable or not, how profitable you're going to be. It would always become a game of chance. It's not good enough for you as a business owner to be reactive, but instead you have to be proactive. And that's a commonality that most successful business owners have is that they're extremely proactive. And by knowing what your break even cost is, then you can start setting your prices where you know for sure. It's kind of like setting a baseline for yourself. Think of your break even cost as your baseline. And that's how much does it cost for you to run your business, to keep the lights on, to keep the water running, to keep your supply plenished, right? And all of this is your break even cost. And when you find out that number, that means this is the number that you need to make at a bare, 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 bare minimum for you to not go into debt. I speak about passion a lot and I speak about fun a lot because these are the driving forces of my life. But I also know that if you want to be a business owner, you have to be profitable. If you're not profitable, then this just becomes a hobby that costs you money. And if that's the case, maybe you just like lashing a lot and that's okay too. But a hobby that breaks your back and ruin your eyesight, it doesn't make you any money. I think I'm going to pick up crocheting instead. Yeah. Crocheting sounds better. <laughs> so now that I get you guys to understand break-even costs, here are some examples that I want to show you guys. Your break-even costs could look very different when you're a part-time lash artist or a full-time lash artist. And this is the part that I want you to pay attention to for those of you who are considering transitioning from part-time to full-time. Because going from part-time to full-time isn't a 
snap of a finger and you just do it. It should be planned. It should be strategized. And as a part-time lash artist, your break-even cost will be your fixed expenses plus your variable expenses and plus your personal expenses because after all, you have to eat, you have to live, you have to have fun, you have to go to the movies. Maybe not right now, but you definitely need to do all those things. So there's your personal expenses. And then the only difference here is that if you are a part-time lash artist and you have some other supplementary income, that means you have more wiggle room, right? That means you don't have, you don't relying solely on lashes as your only income. So what you would do is that you will minus your other income and that will equal your break even point. And for those doctors out there that's watching this webinar or lawyers out there that's watching this webinar, you're going to find your break even point at a negative. <laughs> because you probably make a lot more money from your other job. And maybe this is not as relevant to you. But for those of you who are also using, you know, your eyelash extension business as a, you know, supplementary income, and it's important to you, then this is the equation that you would look at. Fixed expenses plus variable expenses plus personal expenses minus your other income equals your break-even cost. Now, if you're a full-time artist, that means your whole entire livelihood, and maybe even your family's livelihood, depends on you doing lashes. This is the equation that you have to consider. It's what is your fixed expenses plus your variable expenses plus your personal expenses. And that would equal your break-even point. And all of this, it's going to give you a number so that you can know. You can get this number out at least at the very least today. I want you guys to maybe get all of your numbers down and get this number out and plaster it on your wall so that you can look at it and remind yourself that lashing comes with a cost. Running business comes with a cost. And if you don't, you're, if you don't visualize that cost and you don't accept and you know, conceptualize that cost, a lot of the time we run into the problem of start running a business that is no longer profitable because we just keep giving and giving and not really thinking about how much does it cost for you to give and everything comes with a price. Okay. Now the next concept that I want to talk about, it's your cost per hour. Once we figure out how much it is that it costs you to run your business on a monthly basis, you want to know how much does it cost on your hour? Because a lot of times people, I ask people, do you know how much your time is worth? And they always like, oh, I don't know, $50, $100, $1,000. <laughs> See, once again, we're leaving this arbitrary way of, you know, conceptualizing how much is our hour worth when there's an actual equation that we can calculate very easily to see what is our cost per hour in a fixed bare minimum break even cost. And that would be your total expenses divided by the hours that you work. And that will give you your cost per hour. And when I say the hour you work, I think a lot of you think about how long you spent in front of your clients applying their lashes, but it's more than that. If you are editing your own social media content, if you're engaging with your audience, if you are doing running ads on your own, if you are cleaning your studio, you know, if you're training a staff, all of these are consider your work hours. A work hours is the time that you dedicated to your business and you can't do anything else while you're working. That's your work hour and you deserve to get paid for it. And this is where we go back to charging your worth. This is part of your worth. You know, you're, it's not just how beautiful you make your client look and, you know, with your lashes, but it's also how did they feel when they came across your social media page? How clean is your place? You know, all the certification that you get, all of those matters and all of those takes time. So you want to consider all that into your work hour. And this is how you can start getting an idea of how much is your cost per hour. So what is your worth? This is the equation that gives you what your worth is. Yeah, makes sense. Moving on. It's so hard because I'm not really like talking to anybody. I'm just watching the slide. I'm talking in front of a screen. Um, but I'm going to assume that you guys are nodding along, taking your notes and everything is makes sense. And if it doesn't, I encourage you to jot down any questions that you have. You can put them into the Q&A section um, and I can see them and I will try to answer them because the Q&A section is visible to me. Or you can just simply save your question at the end. 
All right, now I'm gonna give you guys more of complex concept that maybe not a lot of us are talking about in the industry. And I think that what motivated me to do this webinar, it's because I know there are so many talks in the industry of saying, charge your worth, charge more, you're charging the wrong prices, increase your prices, we're devaluing the industry. And all of these are such important topics to bring up. But however, I feel like the industry is failing you. We're failing you in showing you how. We talk about what you should do, but we never talk about how you can do it. And here is some of the more advanced concept that I want you to start thinking about. And today, my job is to show you the how. Okay, so what is client lifetime value? During that period of time I'm talking, maybe you might have already read this. Your client lifetime value, to break it down simply, is how much do you expect a client to spend with you in the whole entire duration of their lifetime? Okay, so in their whole entire life, how much money do you think they will give you? And that's their client lifetime value. For those of you um, who maybe have been in business, you can use this equation to kind of calculate your client lifetime value. Let's say we've been in business for three years, we made $150,000 in this three years, I know it's not a lot of money, bear with me. $150,000 in three years, and you serve 1,000 clients. Your client's lifetime value will be 150,000 divided by 100 and equals $1,500. So we're basically taking the money that we made in three years, divided by the number of clients that we've seen in this three years, all of them, the client that stuck with you the whole entire time, you know? And that means your clients on average is spending $1,500 with you in the three years that you've been in business. Now, for those of you who may not have been in business in a while and you don't really know what to expect, I've actually created some numbers that I've taken from talking to other lash artists, being in my own business. These are the numbers that I've kind of concluded. It's the average, uh, average dollar your clients spend with you a year times the average number of years that they usually stay with you or get services with you. And you can see why I do it this way because it would be different if you are a microblader or you are a lash artist or you do brow lamination or lash lift. Because if we don't understand number and we don't understand this, we will often think that, oh, being a brow lash artist is so much better because being a brow lash artist, each one of my service is $600 to $800. But being a lash artist, my service is only $100 to $300. I should be a brow artist. But what you don't understand is that a brow artist don't see their clients very often. They see their clients at most twice every three years. And then that's it. So um, that's why it's better to understand how the numbers work rather than just looking at the surface of how much people are making. So here we have average number dollar that clients spend a year. So in our industry, in mid to high range, it's around $1,500 a year that a client spend on lash extension, that it's getting a fill consistently every three weeks for a whole entire year. And on average, one client usually stay about three years with their lash artist. The reason why it's because, um, you know, your lash artist career span is usually not that long. So this is kind of the number that I got. So Michelle asked, is the profit gross or net? So when you're thinking about your client, um, you know, lifetime value, it will be gross, not net. Net would only just be how much you end up taking home. For those of you, maybe that's something I should have included in here, the difference between gross profit and net profit. So gross profit is how much money you make before you pay taxes, before you pay all your expenses, before you pay anything. That's the gross, right? It's kind of gross because you don't actually get that much. <laughs> the net profit is how much you end up taking home. So that's after you pay your taxes, after you pay your employees, after you pay all your expenses, that becomes your net. So when you're looking at your client lifetime value, you're actually looking at gross and not net. Does that make sense? Um, okay. So the next concept, it's very intertwining with your client lifetime value. It's client acquisition costs. This is again, something that I feel like the industry has not talked about enough, but I know it's extremely important. Um, to just give you guys a quick little background on me, I used to be a professional poker player. So 
you can say number is my jam. I do really like number and I also really like strategy. This is why I'm able to kind of look at this price setting and all of these problems in our industry with a more strategic and mathematical lens. And I hope to kind of lend you this lens for a minute and for you to kind of look at your business through a more mathematical and data driven lens. Um, you know, cause we often as a lash artist are in our creative mind and this might be foreign to you. Uh, for those of you, maybe are accountant, this is super easy, but for those of you who aren't, this is extremely foreign to you, but it's important just because it's foreign. We still have to do it because it's important for our business. Um, but you don't always have to wear this analytical and data driven lens. Um, you know, but it's just being able to be flexible and have both. So your customer acquisition cost is essentially on what is the average expenses that you spend on attracting a new client. So that can be different depending on how much you value, um, you know, new client acquisition. For example, if you're somebody on average, when we're talking about client acquisition costs, we're talking about marketing costs for us in our business. We're mainly talking about marketing costs and that's the marketing cost of photo shoot. Um, that's the marketing cost of, you know, Giveaway. Giveaway is one of the most straightforward way for you to look at client acquisition costs. That's also the cost of, you know, um, doing promos, uh, doing coupons, doing, you know, a buy, like introducing like a referral program. Those are all client acquisition costs. The reason why we need to know about client acquisition costs is that it's a simple balance of numbers, right? We first looked at how much a client can how much we can potentially make off a client in a given year. So that's anything between 1500 to 45, uh, not a year and a lifetime that they are with you. So that's $1,500 or $4,500 in the previous example that we saw. Now we need to look at how much does it cost to get them in the door. This is why um, a lot of people often come to me and ask me, Cheryl, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. My work is really, really good. Um, and I am, you know, charging reasonably, but somehow I'm just not getting clients in my door. I'm not fully booked. Is that you? Like, are you, do you resonate with this? Do you feel like you're that trapped artist who you, you believe in your work and your artistry, but somehow you just don't get enough clients? That's probably because you're not spending money to get clients. And usually the more money somebody is going to spend with you, the longer it's going to take for you to cultivate that relationship and the more money it's going to cost for you to acquire this person. Let's say if we are going to get someone to buy our Apple and we bought um, and we're selling these Apple for $5 each, right? And at most this person is going to buy five apples with us and that's $25. We don't really need to spend any money to acquire this person. And you shouldn't because any money you spend, you're going to end up making no money, right? But if you are going to expect somebody to spend thousands of dollars with you in the lifetime they're together with you, you want to consider how and where are you spending that money to acquire them? Whether that is, even for those of you who say, oh, I don't need to buy ads. I'll just engage on my social media. I would just be more active. Um, I would go and network more and, you know, collaborate more. All of those comes with a cost because we mentioned earlier, time is money. Are you including this in your cost as well? You know, so here we have an example. You spend $400 in a giveaway and you end up gaining four clients your client acquisition cost will be $100 because you spend $100 to gain each client. And if this client, if you do everything right and you keep them for like as long as you can, and let's say that three years, that means that clients will spend $4,500 with you. Doesn't $100 seem so minimal, seems so small now? Um, thinking about, because if I just tell you, oh, you gotta spend $100 to get one client, you're gonna be like, wait, what? My, my service is only $80. Like, how am I going to spend $100 to acquire this client? But if you look at the bigger picture here, as you can see, the relationship between your client lifetime value and your client acquisition cost is that if you are able to spend $100 to gain a new client and her client lifetime value is $1,500, you're doing really, really well. So that means you're going to be end up making $1,400 on this person. Does that seem a little less daunting? Um, does that encourage you guys? Like, I would be asking a lot of one way question, obviously, but I was wondering, would this encourage you guys to maybe start thinking about hiring 
videographer, doing photo shoots, hiring social media manager, and all of these things that help you grow your business because all you need to think about it, they are just client acquisition costs. And for the, my new beginner artist here, I know this is a question I will address a little later and how to set prices if you don't have experience and you're completely new to the industry, stick around with me and I'll explain that part to you. But you will see that my suggestion has always been work on models and you know investing that time into creating works and not get paid for it. The worst thing you can do to your business is start charging $40, $50 for a set in the beginning and hoping to get to $250 price point. That is a what 400 times price increase it's astronomical like you're never going to be able to achieve that kind of price increase with some sort of drawback right so instead you should look at the time that you're investing into doing models in the beginning building up your portfolio and you know just doing everyone's lashes for free and not getting charged for it as a client acquisition cost and here we have an example number two, because not always you have to focus in acquiring new clients. You know, sometimes it's more important for you to try to max out or extend that client lifetime value of an existing client. So that means you spend $50 on a client's appreciation, a gift. And she goes from spending a year with you to spending three years with you because every single year you give her a little bit of money. Um, in giving back like $50 gift cards, a bottle of wine, whatever it may be. After three years of doing that, it's $150, but her client lifetime value that you got to earn from her went from $1,500 to $4,500. You see how in this example, you're not like client acquisition cost isn't always in acquiring new client, but it's just in how do you extend the, you know, client lifetime value. Okay, so that's a lot of boring math and I promise you guys going forward, it won't be as boring anymore, but these are the concepts that I want you guys to get yourself familiar with and start thinking about it in the back of your head, right? These are going to be these tool belts in your toolkit as a lash artist, as a business owner that you can whip out anytime you need because your only tool, your like tweezers and lashes aren't your only tools. Your tools are also thinking about your business in a strategic way like this. Um, next thing is we are now going to show you the formula that I've been talking about. Okay. I personally like to charge my service on an hourly basis because I feel like it's the easiest, the most straightforward way to charge your services instead of thinking, okay, classic, I'm going to charge this much volume. I'm going to charge this much two weeks, fill, five weeks, fill, four weeks, fill all of this. It's very confusing, not only for you, but also for your clients. And one thing I know for sure is a confused consumer is a consumer that doesn't buy. Say it with me. A confused consumer is a consumer that won't buy. So when you have eight different items on your menu with eight different prices, they're not going to know what to do with it. They, they're so overwhelmed with the number of prices on there that they're just going to give up and go to someone else. You know, so instead, I highly encourage you to start thinking about your service as our service, but not like service. There's really no difference between doing classic and volume. The only difference is the education that you have put into it, the practice that you put into it. But in what we talked about earlier, that's all included in your pricing. You consider all of that already in your fixed costs, your variable costs. So you really shouldn't ask your client to pay, you know, 20 percent more because you're doing volume or um you know 20 percent less because you're doing classic it really should just be based on time and we all know a classic appointment ranges from one and a half hour to two hours and then a volume appointment ranges from three hours to four hours if you're doing mega volume or however long you take once you figure out what your cost per hour is then you can just times that by the number of hours that would be the easiest way for you to list your prices so first thing is we're going to figure out what is the minimum that we have to charge in order for us to, you know, put food on a table and continue this business and not give up and not like go into debt running this business lash extension. So that's our first category is our minimum service price. So our minimum service price equation will be looking at our monthly break even costs. And we're going to divide that by the monthly work hours. So, that's your service hour plus your non-service hours. We talked about this. Then we'll get essentially a cost per hour. 
how much at the bare minimum you need to charge per hour in order to be a profitable business. All of, I want you guys to take a screenshot of this, plaster this in front of your like, you know, phone, screen, TV, whatever, as you're doing the math later tonight when you're trying to figure out the prices for yourself. Um, now, the next one is once we figure out what our minimum cost is, we want to go into our goal because everyone's got goal. We want to grow. We don't want to stay stagnant. We don't want to break even forever. We want to be profitable. Not only we want to be profitable, we want to be extremely profitable, right? So in order to do this, all you need to do is take the formula that we've already established. And then we just, in the cost, we're going to add our goal income to it too. Once we add our goal earnings, we can figure out what, how much we need to charge per hour to get to where we want to be. I know all of this is a lot, but I'm about to show you guys how it's done. So that means you guys have to, um, oh, wait, not yet. <laughs> now, for those of you who do insist on charging per service and figure out what your cost per service is, here's the formula for you to figure out what your cost per service is. I'm using Phil as an example here. The reason why it's because as a lash business, the bloodline of your business, it's refills. It's not new clients. It's not new customers, right? Because you would just be running in the loop and constantly trying to get new customer. Instead, you need to consider how much your baseline should be, how much are you charging your bills, okay? And that is similar equation as we done earlier, taking your monthly break-even cost divided by the monthly number of services that you're going to be providing. So how many bills are you gonna provide in a month? I think that you should not work more than four bills a day no more than five days a week. That's just personal preference. I know there are a lot of hustlers out there that is working seven days a week, but burnout is on its way. I can tell you that right now. Uh, and hopefully with this equation, I can show you guys that you don't have to work that hard to make that much money. It's about pricing smart to make that much money. So here um, we will have our monthly break-even costs divided by monthly number of services that you provide in the fills that will equal how much you will charge per fill. And then obviously same in your goal setting one, it will be your break even cost plus your goal earning, not your ideal earning. I forgot to edit that one. Your goal earnings and divided by the number of services that you provide in fills, that will equal your cost per fill. I'll give you guys a second to take a picture of this one um, and then we'll move on. Let's see how we're we doing on time. So we are at 2.47. Um, we're going to be around for the next 10 minutes to kind of talk about this um, case study that I have built for you guys. And then we can go into questions. All right. So now that we know, I want you guys to meet my friend, Amy. <laughs> Give a round of applause for Amy, guys. <laughs> Amy, it's a fake person I made up. But... This might be you, you know, if you want to look at it, you can see, just pretend, put yourself in Amy's shoes for a second. Let's channel our empathy for a second, okay? So Amy, it's a solo lash artist. She's a full-time lash artist. So that means her whole entire livelihood depends on her lash business. She's been in the industry for two years now. She lives in Vancouver. She offers volume and classic. She wants, this is Amy's goal, her dream in the next six months is that she wants to hire a social media manager. Okay. And she's ready for a price increase. Now today we're going to show Amy how it's done. Um, and before we get started, I want you guys to see how I broke down Amy for you guys, but you guys will see that her two years of experience will have nothing to do with our prices. The fact that she lives in Vancouver will have nothing to do with our prices. The fact that she offers volume and social and classic nothing to do with our prices. But what we are going to really consider is the fact that what it's her plan with her business, what's her growth trajectory with her business. So first, let's look at what Amy's fixed expenses are. So here are all these arbitrary number again that I made up. And for those of you who have your numbers ready, maybe you wanna do this with your own number. And if not, you can just follow along with this example and just pretend like this is your number. And then everything will kind of make sense when you go home and do it with your actual number. 
Amy pays about $600 a month at rent. She's at this cute little studio and she has her own room in there. And Amy has her Shopify um, subscription because no client wants to listen to ads. Let me tell you that right now. Um, Cause I did that in the beginning. Invest in your business. If you want to present yourself as a professional, you can't have ads in your music playing, you know, QuickBook. So this is something I highly recommend everyone need to get because that's the difference between doing 60 hours of bookkeeping at the end of the year or doing one hour of bookkeeping once every two weeks, you know? So that $50 a month, it's really going to save your life at the end of it because we are all just trying to buy convenience, freedoms. That's what all it's all about. Um, Skillshare or any other, because Amy wants to learn a little bit about editings and, you know, graphic design because Amy wants to spice up her, you know, page a little bit. So I've always encouraged you to not spend 100% of your education budget into refining your artistry, but allocate some of that, diversify your education budget, some into bookkeeping, accounting, some into business, some into growth, some into management, because every other aspect of your business matter and they only matter when you start taking them seriously and investing the time and resources into getting better at it so skillshare is just essentially a learning platform that amy subscribes to um amy pays insurance 150 dollars a month she has a business loan because she took out a loan and she was trying to build this business she wants to open a salon so she has to pay back 400 dollars a month in the loan and then um amy also has a later subscription that's for her to auto post her um, pictures on social media so she doesn't have to spend all day on her Instagram uh, she can bash her content Amy's on Canva obviously because that's where Amy's gonna be creating all her graphics and pictures and that's where I created this beautiful PowerPoint for you guys on Canva for a small price of $9.95 a month <laughs> and that Amy needs to keep her you know lights on and water running her utility bills her internet bills because you can't have spotify without internet um so you can see at the end of this when we add it all up you get a 1353.44 and that's amy's total fixed expenses if you guys want to double check the math go ahead but this is the math of amy's fixed expenses now let's move on to amy's variable expenses Amy's variable expenses are going to be aftercare package. So she spends about $100 a month on her. How we know this? It's because in the last six months, she spent $600 on aftercare package. That includes cleanser, foam pump, mascara wands, cards, um, you know, everything. And we know she spent $600 in the last six months. So we divide it by six. We got $100 a month. And then next thing is Amy's lash supplies because she only uses ua you know she only uses retention and she uses our creators collection and she loves her pitch perfect so in the last six months she spent 900 dollars on her lash supplies we divide that by six we got 150 dollars a month on average as her variable lash supply expenses amy took a 1500 dollars course um last you know few months ago and she plans to do this twice a year so that means she's spending $250 on average a month on her lash course um, Amy made $35,000 uh, of income in the last six months and she paid 15% on taxes again these are just numbers I'm throwing out there to show you guys um, how it works but she's basically putting aside $875 for taxes and she does a giveaway quarterly once every three months. And that giveaway is a value of $500. So that means she's spending $125 a month on giveaway. Are you guys still following along? Am I losing you guys a little bit? Uh, hopefully you guys are still following along. Now, Amy know the power of doing a professional photo shoot and having professional pictures on her feed. So she spent, she gave herself a budget of $500 every six months to do a photo shoot. And that works out to be $83.33 per month on photo shoot. And then she also drives to work and she spends about $100 a month on driving to work. And with COVID and everything, she now has to spend more money on PPE than she ever had to before. So she's spending about $60 a month on PPE. And then um, Amy also likes to retail some goods because she's a smart 
you know, savvy businesswoman. She knows that her income doesn't only restrict to how much lashes she does, but also in, you know, how, what she can sell. So in her um, retail, she sells some lip masks, she sells some cleansers, she sells some eye uh, envies, you know, some growth serums. So she spends about $150 a month on buying inventories for her retail goods. And then also, Amy wants to not only be a better lash artist, she also wants to provide a better studio and better space for her client. So she spends about $1,000 a year on salon improvement. So that works out to be $83.33 a month. And as you can see here, in Amy's variable expenses, it adds up to be $1,976.66. So are you guys dying yet with all the numbers? <laughs> now we get to the fun part. So now that we have these numbers, we know she spent $13.53 a month on fixed expenses, $19.76 on variable, and then Amy also has to eat, live, breathe, and that and pay rent where she lives and all that. And so Amy's personal expenses, it's about $2,500 a month. And as a new business owner, Amy, it's cash strapped. She's not being lavish. She's not going to the movie. She's not buying Hermes. So $2,500, it's a very, very bare minimum to just keep food on her table, to keep her lights on, to keep all of that. And that's her personal expenses. And we can see a whopping total of $58.30. And that's how much she is spending a month on keeping her business and keeping herself alive. And then, however, luckily for Amy, because Amy's a smart girl, she bought some retail product every single month and she makes about $600 in retail income. So we can see that Amy essentially need to make at least $52.30 in order to break even. So that means every single month, Amy needs to make minimum $5,200. $30.10 to just keep her business alive and keep seeing clients and keep taking clients. Is that shocking for you guys? I want to know if you guys can just comment in the comment below. Like, are you shocked? Are you surprised? Or are you like, you expected this? Because I think a lot of us maybe, I know I didn't do this. I didn't look at my business this way. I didn't look at it and be like, how much does it cost for me to run my business? You know? So here you can see that Amy, it costs her $5,200 and 30 cents. It's not cheap. It's not cheap to run a business. You know, this is why we can't charge $60 for a full set. We can't charge $40 for a fill because we would not only be breaking our backs. We're also not making money while we're breaking our backs, you know, and who's going to pay for our acupuncture? I haven't even considered that in our um, expenses. Maybe you need to add that into your expenses too, like your acupuncture costs, you know, uh, chiropractor costs, you know, all of this, it's part of your expenses in being alive and being a business owner. So now we know Amy's monthly break-even point. We can get to the fun part. Okay. So first, let's figure out how much does it cost for Amy to break even every single month, right? We'll take a look at our formula that we had earlier, right? We looked at Amy's total monthly cost. So this is Amy's break even point, $5,230. We're going to divide it by the number of hours that Amy going to work a month. So Amy's going to be working 40 hours a week. And usually that's 4.33 weeks a month. Um, that's just taking 52 divided by 12. If you guys are wondering where that number came from. So in a year, there's 52 weeks, 12 months. So that being averaged to be 4.33 weeks per month. So Amy, essentially it's going to be working, you know, 172.3, no, 173.2 hours per week, uh, sorry, per month. And then we're going to take that number, her break-even cost, divided by the number of hours she works. You're going to get a number of $30.20. So Amy's worth at this point to just break even, put food on her table, bare, bare minimum, like bare minimum. I'm talking about bare minimum. Like, I mean, like you can't even go see a movie unless it's Tuesday half price minimum. Okay. Um, Amy needs to charge $30.20. So just imagine how are you going to be able to be profitable if you are charging $40 for a fill and your fills are an hour long? You're literally losing money. You're losing money to run your business, okay? So as you can see, once we know what Amy's hourly rate is, we would just plug that into her services. 
volume is three and a half hours. And this three and a half hours, not just she apply lashes for three and a half hours, three and a half hours is from the time she greets her client to the time her clients leave the door. That whole entire duration that includes cleanup, that includes proper prepping, includes putting on the music, includes everything, includes checking out. It's three and a half hours. And then with COVID now, remember how we talked about having more buffer room in between each client for you to sanitize, for you to do all this. So those of you who are comfortable with your co pricing before COVID and you want to know what you need to do in order for you to keep the same income to do, like through COVID, you can just add in that extra time. So maybe now you're going from three and a half hours to like three hours and 45 minutes. So 3.75 hours per service, right? So as you can see here, Amy should be at least minimum in order to break even. She has to charge $105 for her volume and $75 for a classic and then $45 for her one hour fill. You guys are probably thinking right now, oh, that's not bad. Like, I guess I can keep charging $105 for my services and what's the big deal? But let's look at how Amy would charge if she was doing a fill, okay? So it's the same equation, same thing. We're taking Amy's total break even cost. We're gonna divide it by the number of fills I think she should work. So four times a day. 21 days a month, because you should definitely take your weekends. And that brings Amy to $62.26 per fill. And you're like, not bad. I can charge $62.26 for a fill. Not a big deal. With a little bit of tip, I might be being, doing pretty well. Ever. Remember what I said, guys. Amy is tired. Amy is working hard. Amy is just eating macaroni and cheese, girl. You don't want that. You didn't work so hard and break your back so you can eat macaroni and cheese. You didn't work so hard so that you can, you know, barely get by. As a business owner, we took on this whole entire challenge of being an entrepreneur. It's because we want to succeed and we want to make money. So we don't want to just break even. That's Every entrepreneur's nightmare is to consistently break even. And fortunately for us in the lash industry, as a lash owner, your cost isn't too high compared to, let's say, for me as a brand owner, I'm not going to be profitable for at least one or two years because I have so much more added cost. As a salon owner, you're not going to be profitable for a really long time because you're also responsible for other people's um, you know, salaries, commission, and all that overhead, building out, renovation, all of it. You might not break even for a really long time. But for solo artists, the last thing you want to do is break even because it's literally the worst situation that you can be in. Now, instead, let's say Amy wants to just make, she's not that ambitious yet. She just want to make a thousand dollar more every month. You know, she wants to be able to go see the, see a movies with her friends whenever she wants to, you know, she's not buying Birkins yet. She's not buying Chanel's yet. She just want to have some fun. You know, maybe she could save up a little bit of money to go on vacation once or twice a year. And she decided, okay, for my first year, I just want to make a thousand dollar more every single month to more than my break even. I want to profit a thousand dollar a month. That's profit, $1,000 a month. That's it. That's not asking for much. You just want to make a profit of $1,000 a month. And you can see here, we took our Amy's break even point, which is $5,230, plus that $1,000 extra dollar that she wants to make her profit. That's the net that we're talking about here. Um, we plus that $1,000, we do the same equation again. And now the number's a little bit different. Now we're arriving at $35.94. Okay, so this might not mean anything to you guys, right? Because you're like, okay, uh, okay, we went from $30 to $35. You see how small that change is? That small, tiny little change is bringing you $1,000 more every single month. So when next time you're afraid of price increase and you don't know how to do it, do it this way. How much more money do you want to make? When you want a price increase, is it because you have more costs? Is it because you just genuinely want to make more money? Is it because you want to work less hours? What is it? Plug it into this equation. And then the number comes out at the other end. You're going to be like, oh, that's not that bad. Did you know that, you know, instead of charging your service at $105 per volume set, and you just charge $125, that's a $20 increase. You're going to make $1,000 more every single month. 
working 40 hours a week. That's it. That's all you need to do. It's just a $20 increase. Okay. Um, now let's look at Amy's spills, right? So essentially we're doing the same equation here. Amy is going from a $60 fill to a $74 fill, right? Not a huge price increase, but she's now able to make a thousand dollar more every single month. Now she can put that thousand dollar towards saving. She can put that thousand dollars towards growing her business, whatever she wants to do with it. But she is getting a thousand dollar more every single month by increasing her service from a $67 fill to a $74 fill. It's really not that much now, but remember what we talked about earlier, Amy wants a social media manager because she doesn't like Instagram. She doesn't have the time for it. She doesn't have the eyes for it. It's just too much. It's too much, you know? So guess what? She wants to hire a social media manager. Like we said earlier, what does a social media manager do? They help you take care of your Instagram engagement. They help you plan your fee. They help you write your captions. They help you have a very presentable business on social media. That's what a social media manager does. And their going rate, it's usually around $600 to $1,200 a month. So I decided to go on a higher end and I'm going to hire Amy, bomb ass social media manager. And that comes with costs. And that comes about $1,200 a month. So my girl doesn't have to give up her extra $1,000 a month. She also can hire a social media manager. All she needs to do is just charge her clients for it. That's all it is. You just need to charge your clients for it. So here, as you can see, we went from 52, 30 plus the thousand dollar every month that I want to make for Amy extra and the $1,200 that it costs for her to hire a social media manager that comes to a total cost of $7,430 as her break even point divided by the hours she works. She's still working, you know, four days a week, 40 hours a week, I'm uh, sorry, five days a week, 40 hours a week, you know, and that's getting her to her worth of $42.98 per hour. Are you guys following along? Maybe this doesn't mean anything to you, but I want you guys to look at the number down here. Amy is not charging some astronomical number for her to start hiring a social media manager. A lot of the time, I think business owners think that like, oh, I can't do that yet. I can't hire a social media manager. I can't outsource. I can't delegate because I don't have the money for it. But I want you guys to look at it. We went from $105 for our volume set for her to break even to $125 for her to make $1,000 a month to $150 for her to have a social media manager. Do you know what that means when you get a social media manager? It means you get more time back to spend it with your family, to spend it with your friend, or more time back to work on the numbers of your business, like this part of your business. That means you get to see more clients because remember work hours. I talked about this with you guys. When I say you work 40 hours a week, I don't mean you lash 40 hours a week. I mean, you work for 30 hours a week and then you work on your social media for 10 hours a week. And then you work on your bookkeeping and all of that. But by outsourcing somebody for $1,200 an hour, Amy can see more clients now, you know? So as you can see by charging $150, like for your volume services, and working, you know, the regular work hour everyone does, you can make pretty good money. You make $7,000 a month. Like that's a really, really good income, you know? So it's not always about charging $300, $400 for a set. It's about understanding where do these numbers go and where does it add up and how do you add it all up? Okay. Now we can look at how much Amy needs to charge for a fill in order for her to make that same amount of money. So it's the same equation. All we can see is that Amy just needs to charge $80 and 45 cents. That's it for Phil. And she can get her social media manager. She can keep the lights on. She can keep herself fed. She makes an extra thousand dollar every single month on top of that. We're not done yet, my friend, because why aim small? We should aim big. Yeah, big, right? Because I don't like working 40 hours a week. I don't know about you guys. I don't want to work 40 hours a week. Those of you who might have followed me from a very, very start for a really long time, you might have known that I was kind of famous for charging full sets only. When I offer service, I did full sets only. 
I didn't do filth. I didn't do anything else because I wanted to travel. I had a long distance relationship that I wanted to be there for. And I want to spend a lot of time with my significant other. Um, and I wanted to not work that hard because I wanted to read books. I wanted to listen to podcasts. I just didn't want to work that hard. You know, you can do it too. And I'm going to show you how. Okay. So here is how you do it. Now we're going to take a look at, I swear Canva doesn't like me. I'm glitching so hard because we got so much good stuff on here. Canva can't handle. <laughs> okay. So let's say Amy's goal here is to hire social media manager, work less and make a thousand dollar more every single month. What are we doing? We're taking all that number, but instead of working 40 hours a week, Amy's going to only work, guess what? 25 hours a week, 25 hours a week. That's all she wants to work. She doesn't want to be enslaved to her business. She only wants to be a smart, savvy business owner. So she's going to work 25 hours a week. So we're just simply changing this number from 173 hours a week to 108 hours a week. So that is almost a 50% decrease on her productivity. And that means Amy needs to charge $68 and 64 cents an hour. And as you can see, that means Amy's volume set needs to be $240 and 24 cents our service. And as you guys know, that's not that expensive for a volume, huh? It's not that bad, but we really upgraded. We went from $105 for our volume to just break even to $125 because we wanted to make a thousand dollar more every month to $150 because we wanted to hire a social media manager to $240 because we want to work half the hour that we used to work. Huh? Am I inspiring you guys? Am I giving you hope? Are you guys feeling inspired? Okay. Now I'll just show you guys a little bit of what I wanted to do. Okay. This was my actual service. It all comes back to the circle of I had this goal that I only wanted to see one client a day and I only want to do full set. That was my goal. And then I started working backwards. I figure out what my cost is. I work, figure out what my break even, how much does it cost for me to pay my mortgage, hang out with my friends, have savings, grow business, all of this. I figure it all out. And then that becomes my total, which in Amy's case is her doing full sets only making a thousand dollars every single month, profit a thousand dollars every single month and having a social media manager and only take one client a day and 25 days a week. That's it. Not even working every day. She's only working on weekdays. And you can see that it's $7,430 per break, her total cost divided by the number of clients that she's going to see. It's 21 clients. All she needs to do is charge $353 a set. Mic drop. Where's my mic? Where's my mic? I don't have it. <laughs> but I hope that this shows to you that like shows you that anything you want, you can get, but set a goal for it and understand how the number would get you there. And that's how I got there. I was charging $350 for my full sets to $425 for my mega volume. So 350 for my volume, three, um, 425 for my mega volume. I saw one clients a day and I work five days a week. That's all I did at the end of my career as a lash artist before I dive into. But the reason why I did that is because it gave me so much time to read. It gave me so much time to learn. It gave me so much time to take courses and all of this, which then led me to my education career. I was able to devote more time into building my curriculum, advertising my courses, taking training, training students, and then also gave me more time on building, finding, you know, my suppliers for my products, building the team that I have. So as you can see that like anything is reachable, if you really sat down with yourself, thought about it, and then do the number, it becomes so much easier to digest rather than like, ooh, charging $300? Like, can I do that? Like, is that possible? How do I do it? You know? So now it's a time for you guys, if you guys have any questions, I would encourage you guys to start putting the questions in the comment box. Obviously, we're going a little over time, so I don't want to keep you guys too, too much longer, but any question that you have, I'll be here to answer. But if you want to geek out a little bit more, here are some of the things that I want you to consider. 
I want you to consider pricing your service considering your client's money perception. Let's say Amy only wants to she figure out however much she needs to make. She only needs to charge, you know, 20. Uh, Christine, I'm going to go back to the slide and show you what 21. It means you see one client a day, 21 days a week, just because you only work on weekdays. So five days a week, 4.33 weeks a month. So that means you're seeing 21 clients a month. That's what that is. Um, so that's essentially seeing a client a day, five days a week, you know, pretty much. Um, so some of the other things I want you to consider is consider pricing your um, service in, with your money, your client's money perception. If you want to do texture set and you want to target, you know, um, the mid early twenties that likes the glamour style, are they really going to be able to afford $250 of a full set? Probably not. But let's say if you figure out all the numbers and you figure out for you to break even and all of that and make some money, it's only a $150 set. That doesn't mean you have to charge $150. That just for you to understand that $150 is your baseline. Now you can look at your client's money perception. If your clients are all Birkin wearing clients, you can charge $150 up to however much you want. You know, you can start working less, you can start taking more clients, you can start making more money, but it's just getting you to understand that your pricing also had to align with your client's money perception. Some of the things that you want to take into in consideration is inflation, sales and promotion. Those are all your costs as well. What is your company value? Like is your company an affordable, like at UA, for example, our company value isn't luxury. We're not trying to be the most expensive brand and the most expensive products out there. We actually want to be the most reasonably priced. That's why we don't do promos. We don't do discounts. We don't do any of those like regular discounts because we give back in this format, like in webinars. I invest a lot of time into building out webinars like this and educational content like this. And this is my way thinking it's my biggest impact I can make to the lash industry and giving back. It's greater than any promotion and any sales that I can ever do for the industry, you know? And then you also want to take into consideration of your growth and your scale. Where do you want to be, right? One of the best advice I had taken from somebody was that think about where your business is going to be in five years and then start acting like it now. You might not be making that same amount of money you would make in five years. You may not have the team that you have, but start acting like it now. It's maybe in some way, some of you would resonate with this a little bit more. It's manifest it, like, you know, or um, visualize it or whatever it is, but act like a business owner and act like the way that you want your business to be five years from now today, you know, and that comes with thinking about how to name your prices. All right. So tips for beginners right? I want to leave you guys with one tip. It's focused on building the foundation to the business first. Focus on building your business the right way, setting your prices the right way, um, setting your business the right way. Don't start with a $60 set. Don't start with a break even with a minimal cost. Because like I said, going from $50 a set to $250, it's going to take you a really, 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 really long time. What I can share with you is what I did. What I did was I took my first six months in taking, when I was still doing classic, I didn't offer volume, but I already took my volume training. I took models after models after models. And I offer my existing client the price of volume for the price of classic, right? And I just kept taking on clients and building out my portfolio. Every single person I talked to, I'm in a sauna in my like building. I found a model. I go to the mall, I find a model. I just keep finding these models and do my work. Because let's say each one of my set is about $200, right? And I do 10 model, that is $2,000 that I'm investing in my business. But remember what we talked about the cost, a client acquisition cost and your fixed income and your variable income, you can calculate all of that into your expenses, into your cost. And then you can make it all back tenfold later when you're ready to truly introduce the service to the industry in the way that you're proud of, in the way that you're happy with. I think one of the biggest mistakes you can do to yourself is focus so much on money right from the get-go because you don't need someone to pay you $40 to subsidize the cost of your lash, like your lash supplies or your glue and all of that. Thinking like that is being narrow-minded and short-sighted. 
you're thinking about your immediate return, but I want you to think about your business return five years from now, 10 years from now. So it's really important for you to just be willing to invest in your business and be willing to build that portfolio, even though it costs you some money upfront, because with every successful business, it comes with a cost and every single business are going to have that. And you need to be ready to take on that cost. If you're not ready to take on that cost and you just want to, you know, charge your friend $20 to do her lashes and charge her $40, it's not going to lead you to a more long-term strategy. So building out your numbers, right? Now we're coming to an end. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. So I wanted to release this new product with you guys here because um, this is something that we are, it's already on the way here. Can you guys guess what it is? I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds to try to guess it. Um, you know, and then I will tell you guys in a second. <laughs> okay. All right, UA is launching a new adhesive. So with the summer months coming, you know, one of the common thing we're getting from lash artists is that, oh, I love retention, but retention isn't really working for me anymore because my room is 24 degrees now, it's 60% humidity now. So we decided to launch a new adhesive. This adhesive is a two to four second dry time adhesive, hence the name, hold up, because our fastest adhesive with a half second dry time is called Time's Up, and now we have a slower dry time adhesive called Hold Up. Who is Hold Up really for? It's for beginner lash artists, and as well as for lash artists who are looking for a slower drying adhesive during the summer months. Now, if your environment, it's over 26 degrees or 28 degrees, girlfriend, get an air conditioner because not only is it not good for your adhesive to be in that environment, it's absolutely torture for your client to lay in the bed with a mask, with a visor and all those things. And it's like hot, it's 26 degrees or 28 degrees. So adhesive in general likes a 21 degree um, temperature. And I don't really wanna like go on and tell you guys all about adhesive. You can learn all about it in our adhesive webinar that's now available on YouTube. Um, but we are launching this new adhesive called Hold Up. And today for attending this webinar, I wanna thank you guys. You can use the code Hold Up to get 50% off of our new adhesive. And this code will expire end of Sunday night. Um, we only have limited supplies, so you don't wanna snooze on it. And then this is limited to one client, one bottle. And you can, you know, some other adhesive to your car or try our lashes try our tweezers like i said we don't off we don't do promos and we don't really do sales uh we only do client appreciations things like a webinar like this or a little code like this and then um yeah that's it if you guys want to stick around and learn a little bit more about this adhesive i'm going to be here and i'm open to chat more about it but other than that, if you guys have to get off and just quickly and go and buy this adhesive, I want to make sure that it is available for you guys. Um, but yeah, let me, let me just make sure. I want to make sure that this is available. So I'm sticking around for a little bit to answer any questions that you guys have. I like how it's at the end of our webinar and none of the number drops. Like, all of you are still sitting there patiently and I thank you so, 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 so much for sticking around and learning with me and geeking out with me. Um, I would also be taking any suggestion that you guys have for future workshop. Some of the workshop that I'm thinking about, it's going to be a social media planning workshop. So in November, I wanted to do a social media planning workshop where essentially you're going to bring your calendar, you're going to bring your ideas and we're going to sit down together for an hour and we're going to plan a month of content together because batching content has really, really changed my life. Um, and I want to share how I do it here at the team with UA so that you guys can start implementing that as well. Uh, let's see, adhesive and remover. Hold up, yes. Okay, so you guys will see that there's no image right now because it's a secret and no one can get it. But you guys can use the code hold up and to get 50% off. Um, the adhesive won't be shipped out until next week. So Technically, this is actually a pre-order just for you guys. And um, like I said, supplies are limited for this one. Um, 
we only have because at UA we really try to keep to order our adhesive like small batch order we don't order our adhesive like months in advance we don't have hundreds and thousands of adhesives sitting in our inventory we actually only order hundreds at a time every single bottle of your adhesive has actually a birth certificate at the bottom of the bottle and this birth certificate essentially identify and help us track when this adhesive was produced, when this adhesive was made. Um, and our adhesives are made from order to ship within 10 days. So by the time you get it, it's usually around like two weeks old at most. Um, and then also our adhesives are like this hold up, it's the exact same formula as retention. So it's exactly the same, but it's just formulated for a higher heat resistance and also for a slower dry time. So it's the same simple four ingredient, two cyanoacrylates in it, uh, PMMA as well as carbon black. And then that's the only difference. So for educators out there, if you've been looking for a glue for your student and maybe um, retention is too like advanced and it's not good for your student, this might be a good adhesive for you to consider. Um, yeah. By the way, do you guys like the wall? We actually painted this, but it's not all done yet. Okay, let me see. I am going to stick around, answer some questions, but those of you who are heading out early, thank you so much for joining me. Um, but now I'm gonna get into some of these questions. Okay, what if my clients are cheap? <laughs> well, that means it's time for you to look for new clients. Mm -hmm. And you can attract your client based on the way you present yourself in social media and like the type, if you want it older clients, you need to have older clients in your portfolio because people want to see that they're represented in the brand, right? If older clients are looking for lash artists, you bet they're going to go to a lash artist that has a lot of older clients in their portfolio. So if you want it to have richer clients, then you should probably not post a lot of picture of teenagers or like, you know, Gen Z's, not that they don't have the money to spend unless you've gone to a very niche Gen Z that like are, has money and are willing to spend on those kind of thing, then that's great. Then that's a niche market that you can get into. But overall, just really think about the clientele that you're targeting, you know? Um, okay. I'm going to go through some of these questions. What is the best way to tell your client that you're increasing your prices? I love this question, um, Annie, because I think this question is really important. Number one thing is that you don't need to tell future clients that you're increasing your prices. So what I mean by that is that don't ever post it on your social media that you're increasing your price. The only reason there's a benefit in doing that is to show your competitor that you're doing better and that your prices are more expensive. Your future clients who've never booked with you doesn't need to know what your previous price is. All you're doing is setting them up for disappointment. That means all they're gonna think about now is, oh, I could have paid $150, but now I'm paying $175. That's what's going through their head. They're not going, thinking about, oh, she must be so good. Oh, she increased her prices. Oh, I really want to book with her. No, 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 no. They're thinking about like, oh, that's expensive, you know? So when you're increasing your prices, keep it private and keep it intimate. What I like to do is that I like to tell my client one month in advance that I'm going to be increasing my prices. You don't need to offer an explanation. Zara is never going to offer you an explanation why they increase the prices. You know, Lululemon is never going to offer you an explanation why they increase or decrease the price. If client asks, then you can tell them. You can be like, oh, you know, due to the increase in costs and all of this, you know, um, I had to make some price adjustments uh, because I've been in the business longer and now, and I also have plans of expanding and all that. But otherwise, if you are not asked, you don't need to offer an explanation. You don't need to explain to people why, you don't need to justify your business to people, okay? So, but what you do need to do is to be respectful and give them ample amount of time to either find someone else if they don't want to stay with you. And what I would do is that go as far as creating a list of lash artists in your area that you respect, that you like, and say, I understand that maybe my price range is out of your price range now, but here's a list of people that I would recommend you go and see if you don't want to continue seeing me. When you say that, people almost always be like, oh, wait, no, no, I want to keep seeing you. I really like you. Or let them go. Let them go. You know how that's saying? If you love something, you let it go. If it's meant to be, oh, come back. Kind of like that, you know? So um, that's why I think when it comes to raising prices, it's just about communication, communication, communication. 
clear, it's kind, right? If you, every single appointment in that one month of time or that two months time, you're reminding your client through text message, through the appointment that they're with you, and then as well as through emails, they are either going to accept or they're going to leave. That's okay. Be prepared for that. When you raise your prices, always be prepared to 30 to 40, 30% of your client will drop off. But what that means is that you're making room for people to pay you a higher price point. So one of the things that I often see on social media that I think a lot of people are not maybe considering the consequences of doing this is that a lot of people will list on their bio, not taking new clients. When you're saying that, when you're saying not taking new clients, what that signals to me and what that means to me, it's not that you're really good and you have all these people waiting to get services done by you. What that means to me is that, you know, you are not maxing out your potential. So that means it's ready for a time price increase. If you are maxed out and you're fully booked and you don't have room for new clients, that is the time to make a price increase. Because like I said, whenever you do a price increase, about 30% of your client will drop off. You're making room for new clients. And also the new clients don't know what you used to charge because you don't announce a price increase. Ah, get it? Okay. Hopefully that answers the question. How often should we change our prices? Annie said. So it's the same thing. Like, um, you know, I think it's time to increase your price when you're fully booked. I think it's time to increase your price when you've done your math and you know that it's time to increase your price. It's time to increase your price when you have some long-term trajectory and growth things that you want to do with your business. Um, those are all appropriate time to increase your prices and increasing your prices. Shouldn't always be, I took a training, you know, because taking a training should be considered part of your cost as we already gone through today. So you don't want to just increase your price because you took a training, you know, that's not going to be a valid reason for you to increase your prices. Um, okay. Let's see. What is some other question? How many models should you do to build your free portfolio before charging, Tasha? I recommend 10. I recommend 10 and I recommend breaking your sessions in two. So in the beginning, you're going to take a, long, a lot longer than you would otherwise. So always break your appointment down into two. Um, so I always tell people that I like to take a refundable deposit. I'm going to see you two times in the next week or whatever. So because you don't want to work more than two hours at a time as a new artist, these clients or these models that you're taking, they're potentially going to be on your portfolio. You want your best work, not your burned out four hour frustrated, want to throw your tweezer against the wall kind of work, but like you're in the zone and like getting it and isolating well and positioning well and focusing on uh, angles and stuff like that. So it's so important for you to break your model session into two. So if you're taking 10 model, technically you're actually lashing 20 times in that duration that you're taking this 10 models. But I think 10 model is a really, really good number. And then because it's enough for you to practice, it's enough for you to build portfolio. It's enough for you to have enough content to post for a month. Even if in the first month you're not getting any clients, that's what happened to me. Like I wasn't getting any client in volume in the first month, but like, you know, I had just picture that I keep posting and posting and people just thought I was taking clients um, and people are seeing me, but they're not, they're just pictures I've taken from before. And I recommend you to take multiple angle from the same person as well so that you can post it multi-purpose them. Next question is how do you pay yourself? Do you take a portion per set or pay yourself monthly? That's a really, really good question. I think that it's better for you to pay yourself monthly treat yourself like wear two different hats in your business. One is the business owner hat. And that's the person that's responsible for payroll, responsible for setting prices, responsible for outsourcing, delegating, and making all business decisions. And then the second role that you will play in your business is the technician role. And in the technician role, you're responsible in creating the best set of lashes. You're responsible for refining your job and getting better at your crafts and your artistry. So because you're doing that, you should pay that technician a salary very similar to like especially if you're incorporated depends on what your business structure is but if you're incorporated um you should be paying yourself a salary and i this is something that i learned from poker i don't know if this is 100 percent applicable here but i'll try to give you guys an example so in poker your earning fluctuates quite a bit because there's variance you win some you lose some right and a poor poker player's money management would be okay i spend a lot when i make a lot I tighten up my belt when I don't make a lot and that becomes 
that means you're not cutting the tie between your business and your personal life. And you know why people like to be an employee and don't want to own their own business? It's because they don't want the ups and downs. They don't want the peaks and valley, right? They want stability. So in poker, what I did for myself was pay myself a salary despite how much I made in a month. So I pay myself a salary of $5,000 a month. So regardless if I won $100,000 that month or I won $2,000 that month or I lost $4,000 that month, I pay myself a salary of $5,000 every single month. So you can do the same thing in your business where you're just paying yourself a monthly salary of whatever you think. So in this situation for Amy, Amy wanted to pay herself a thousand dollar salary every single month. I know it's not a lot of money, but she's just starting out, you know? So um, that would be paying yourself the monthly salary. In the formula, classic 2.5, 2.5, it, it would be $75.50. Is that fill cost for a volume fill? And then 1.5 fill, it's a classic fill type of thing. Yeah, right. That would be pretty much it. So like classic, it's two hours, but remember tagging that 5.5 hours of like work time, which is cleaning up, tidying, and greeting your clients, getting them out of the door, all that stuff. And fill for me was like that too. It was a two hour fill, but then it's two and a half hour to get my clients in the door to out the door. It's two and a half hours, you know? So yes, and then 1.5 hour would be like a classic fill type of thing. Uh, and then let's see, V, what if I'm on my third year and I started charging my client the way you said to avoid inching up from 50 to $80 fill, what should I do? Ooh, okay, this is going to be a little bit difficult. Okay, so if you are already kind of like, you know, took that first step in that way, um, I would just think about restructuring your business completely. Depends on how booked you are right now with your current clients and how happy you are with your current clients. If you're really booked and you're really happy with your current clients, then I would say that you just have to increase more frequently, but like less. So I would increase like $10 every six months, but you're running into a second set of problem here. The second set of problem is that People don't like it if you increase your prices every six months. I'm not going to go to a artist or technician or service if I knew that I can expect a price increase every six months. That's kind of like saying, okay, I'm committing to paying $85 a month right now, but a year from now I'm paying 95 and then two years from now I'm paying a hundred something, you know? So, um, but for now that might be the best way for you to do to inch up to like your ideal pricing, or you can do the other way, which is completely start fresh and then just make an announcement and just say, I've been charging under, I've been charging my prices, um, just to your existing client. Remember new clients, you don't need to make any justification. So what you can do, you can have two sub, two different set of prices. You can have your existing client, they have a set of prices where you start inching them into your ideal price. And then your new clients, you just charge them the prices that you're charging them. And that's it. You don't even have to think about it, you know? Um, hopefully that makes sense. Social media planning. A question about the new adhesive. What humidity level does it work best in and what temperature should we use it at? So the humidity and temperature, this is one of the things that um, if you revisit our adhesive webinar, I've discussed this many times, is that cyanoacrylate, the main ingredient in our adhesive, likes 20 to 21 degrees Celsius. And then they like 45 to 55% humidity. That's what they like. In that range, they're going to work exactly what they promise. So with this adhesive, it's a three, like two and a half to three second dry time. If you go any higher, it's just gonna dry faster. If you go any lower, it's gonna dry slower. So that's why this glue is really for beginner but for people who are looking for a slower dry time retention because of the humidity and the temperature, you can essentially work at 24 um, Celsius temperature and like, you know, 60% humidity level. That just means that this two to four second dry time adhesive becomes a one second dry time adhesive because the dry time is going to vary because of the environment. Um, is the adhesive good for new high humidity? Yes, it will be because it would just dry faster. So if you're looking for one second dry time and you have high humidity, then you can just buy this adhesive. So it would act like a one second dry time adhesive. It's hold up available in Australia. Yes, it will be. Yes, Christine. Um, hold up, it's not available in Australia as of right now, but hold up will be available in Australia in a week and a half. So if you just wait for it, 
Tyler will send out a newsletter to you guys and let you guys know. So for you guys, if you are looking forward to like UA emails and things like that, one thing I want you guys to do me a favor is if you haven't been receiving our email, I want you to go into your spam box or your junk box and then move our email into your, our, your inbox. Because a lot of the time you're going to miss a lot of our like announcements and secret deals and like things like that. Cause I really like giving rewarding our email subscribers, like nuggets of like knowledge, workshops, videos, trainings, like sometimes like bonus, like code and things like that. So right now we send out, we're sending out a survey for you guys to fill out. And if you fill out that survey, you're going to get a free palette for your, like any um, shopping over a hundred dollars in the U S and $150 in the Canada side. So a lot of good deals in the emails. If you want to don't not miss out on them. Uh, what if they tell you, I love your work, but you're too expensive and I can go to someone else whose prices are cheaper. Stephanie, um, this is when you stand your ground and you just be like, I understand where you're coming from and I totally get it. And I think that unfortunately, um, it wouldn't be fair for, to my business and to my clients to lower my prices. So I would love to see you if you would like to give me a try. But in terms of the prices part, I think that I did a really good job at setting my prices fairly. And this is what I tell people all the time. When we were doing the survey, 99% of the people, I asked them, what can UA do better? And they're like, more sales, more discounts. And like, I just wanted to let people know is that I can't offer that because um, now that we talked a lot about pricing today, now we talk a lot about this. So we really just in our business model and our business value is affordability. And that's kind of what we focus on. And then everything else I can only give back in this form, you know, and you can explain the same thing with your clients. And if those who respect you and love your work, they're going to understand it. And if they don't, not everyone is for you, you know, you, you, how do you tell this, if the social media managers are good or not? This is actually a really interesting question that I want you guys to think about, okay? Um, I love doing it this way. I just love getting you guys to think. If there's a social media manager out there that it's going to help you get more than $1,200 worth of value back, so that means letting you book more clients, letting you charge more, letting you, um, you know, have more time with your family, loved ones, building your business, would you pay that social media manager right away? I'm going to assume a lot of your answer is yes. And that's no surprise. It's because humans are afraid of the unknown. We don't want to hire a social media manager, just like you use concern is here. We don't know if they're good or not, but I can tell you right now that a good social media manager is out there and you just have to be able to pull the trigger and try and find them. A really good way for you to hire a social media manager is to look on forums. Like in, so in Facebook, there is a female freelancer group. Um, also look within the industry. Maybe there are other people who are offering the services to other lash artists that's in a different area than you. Like, let's say if you really like a lash artist and the way that she does social media and she's from California and you're from New York, why not hire her? You know, she already know the ins and outs of this business. She understand how to do this business. And then a good way to, what I think um, what you should look for is number one is references. Look at the account they're currently managing and how do you like it? Do you think they're doing a good job? You know, do you like the way they write the caption? Do you like the way the picture looks? Do you like how responsive it is? And then the next thing you want to do is how good are they at communicating? Because a social media manager or any freelancer can be great at what they do, but if they don't know how to communicate with you, like not fluent in the language or doesn't understand what your expectations are, then this partnership is going to be disastrous. And then the last thing is that you want to look at how willing are they to learn? So one of the things I always ask when I'm hiring a social media manager is where do you update your knowledge about social media? You know, what blog do you use? What book do you write? Or what, what blog do you read? What books do you read? What podcasts do you listen to? And if they can't name anything or like what groups are you in? If they can't name anything, that means, okay, maybe they're really good at what they do this year, last year, two years ago. That means they don't have a learner mindset. They won't, they're just good at following instruction. They're not proactive and they're not, they don't take initiative. So these are the three things that I look for. So number one is reference. What clients have they worked with? Do I like the work that they've done? Number two is communication. How well are they at communication? And then number three is 
where do they learn more? Because if they don't have a place, like what you're doing right now, being in this webinar, it's going to make you a better lash artist than other lash artists. It's going to make you a better business owner than other business owner because you are devoting two hours of your time on a Thursday afternoon to come and geek out on pricing with me, right? You want to hire a social media manager that can represent that as well. Because after all, anyone who touches your business represents your business. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you handle if someone tells you you're taking too long because they're used to a one and a half hours? Well, you tell them that you just wait until UA launch pre made and I'll do your volume in one and a half hours. <laughs> I think, Stephanie, um, again, with this question, it's really about what type of clients do you want to, like, you know, market to? Because here, Bring all of your questions here makes me realize that all of you are trying to bend your business to fit everyone, but that's the wrong way to go about business. You're not bending and shaping and forming your business to fit everyone. You're bending, forming, shaping your business to fit your ideal clientele. And if someone is telling you that they want you to do a one and a half hour job, you can't do a one and a half hour job. That is not your ideal clientele. So you don't bend over backwards to make your business one and a half hour for them because they're just not the right fit for you. You know, instead focus all your energy and your money and your resources to acquiring those clients that appreciate a three hour volume set that appreciates a two hour fill because they either like laying there for that long therapeutic for them, or they just like the end results. Either way, those people are out there. So don't bend and sh bend and shape your business to fit everyone but bend and shape them to fit the ones that you want to do business with. Okay. When do you recommend the right time to raise prices? I'm still new and I only been lashing for two months, but I'm charging so little. I don't know when would be the right time to raise them. Courtney, I think right now it's maybe to take, if you only been in the industry for two months, could I dare you or challenge you to just put your business on hold for a little bit? Don't, try to charge for your business right now. Don't try to make money off your business right now. Get back to the root of doing more clients and doing all like all those things and you know, getting models. And then at the end of it, you can come out like a new brand, a new lash company, a new like a lash artist. You can charge whatever you think it's suitable for you at that point, you know? And that would not be very little because you know the formula, you know exactly how to calculate what you need to charge. And then maybe in the first couple of years, you're going to be increasing your price a little bit more frequently. But then as time goes on, you might not be increasing your prices until every time when you're fully booked. Um, how do you recommend finding models beside friends and family given COVID situation? Ooh, that's a tough one. Okay. So Right now, unfortunately, I think you should just only stick to your friends and family. Um, unless you're somebody that's already taking clients, then you wanna do all the procedures that you're supposed to be doing to keep yourself and your clients safe and find these models. But I would say asking your friends and family's friends and family, because six degrees of separation, you know, you can always find somebody by not only offering lashes to be done by, for your friends, but your friend's friends, you know? I'm coming from a high dollar salon, want to branch out on my own. Should I charge the same price or a tad bit lower? Hang Lu, I think you should. If you want to target the same audience, okay, well, let's skip. Step number one is to do the formula that we talked about today. Figure out all your costs to branch out on your own. What would that be? What's your fixed expenses? What's your variable expenses? What's your personal expenses? Figuring all that out and then figuring out what your break even point and then if that is, you know, whatever price it is, and then you look at the audience that you want to target. If you want to target the same audience that you've been working with before, because you have to understand the salon is charging that much because they have way more overhead than you, right? But you will find out that like, okay, maybe if you add $100 more on top of what you, whatever your break even point is, it's a tad bit lower than your salon. That's great. But if you find that like $100 on top of it, it's more than what your salon is charging, then maybe you need to readjust it a little bit. But overall, I think that the step one is to figure out your cost first. Um, how 
So I feel like in terms of charging, adding an e EFT post fee into your variable cost, you would actually add that. Unfortunately, such a great reminder, Tyler. I didn't add that into my PowerPoint today, but your credit card processing fee should be added into your variable cost. I personally do not like charging my client a credit card fee, not because I don't want to charge them. I actually do charge them. I just don't like saying it. No one likes to be told that I'm paying you to pay your credit card, like processing, like that doesn't seem fair to me. I don't like that, you know? So instead you should be including that into your pricing and then just charge them for it. And they don't even know it. They don't have to go through that emotional, like, thought process that like I pay for her credit card fees. It's not a very pleasant way to explain to people why they need to charge a fee. So this is why also another reason why I never ever made my client buy aftercare kit. I've always gave my client an aftercare kit every single appointment. And each after aftercare kit came with a foam pump, came with a brush, and you know came with like cards and stuff like that. The reason why is because all of that kit to me cost me about $2.50, but I increased $10 on my prices. So I made my client felt special. I made them felt good and they feel like it's a luxury service because they're getting this free aftercare kit every single time. They don't even know they're paying for it. Actually, I'm profiting off it. I'm profiting $7.50 of it. Instead of trying to like get your clients to sell it, uh, buy it, Instead, when you're asking your client to buy, you should get them to buy the concentrate and not the foam. I don't want to get into all the details of why, like logistic and legally, why you shouldn't do that. But um, yeah, overall, like depends on what your business model is. But if your business is a you know strict business, it's very bootstrap. It's for like the college kids who just you know want to get by and do one lashes, but don't want all the bells and whistles then charge them, charge them for an aftercare kit or charge them for the processing fee, right? Like all those things, encourage them to give you cash. Um, other than that, I would just, if you are targeting a high end customer, always give them like price all those into your service rather than making them pay it. So I'll give you guys an example here. Okay. What's the difference between if I tell you, if you buy um, 50, if you buy $50, like if you buy this t-shirt, you can pay for $50 and you add $5, I'll give you a hat for free. Uh, sorry, sorry. If you buy this t-shirt for $50, I'll give you this hat that's originally like you know $10 for $10, for $5. So now you're paying $55 because you buy a $5, uh, $50 t-shirt. I'm really losing this example. You're paying $50 for a t-shirt, then you can buy a hat for $5. Or you tell your clients, you pay this t-shirt for $55 and I give you a hat for free. Hmm? You see the difference here? One is the net cost is the same for your clients, $55, no matter what. The net outcome is the same. It's saying, okay, I get a shirt and a hat. I get a shirt and a hat. But the language is what makes it different. Uh -huh. And that's marketing. Um, should I post my prices on social media since you said don't list your price increase? Absolutely do not list your prices on social media. Your prices does not need to be listed on social media because once you list it on social media, you're giving your client one option is for them to scan your prices and decide immediately on the spot if to buy or not to buy. That's why a lot of fancy restaurants, a lot of fancy like, um, clothing store, jewelry stores, and all these places don't have a prices on there because you want to take that opportunity to build a relationship. You want to tell them about yourself. You want to tell them about the service. You want to ask them some questions. What are you looking for? How can I help you? Give them an experience right from the get-go. Then prices become a non-issue, right? But if you just plaster your prices right from the get-go, then you're asking them to decide on whether or not they get your services by you based on prices. And you are asking them to do that. When you don't list your prices, then you ask inviting them to come and talk to you. Because if they like your work enough, they wanna get their lashes done by you and they can't find your prices anywhere, they either have to go on your website or which they're already that much closer to booking or they have to DM you, which now gives you an opportunity to talk to them. A little trick to share with you guys. Working on the craft. 
do you have any recommendation for courses? There's a lot of people who are trainers now, would love to take a volume, a mega volume course, expand my knowledge, but not sure where to go. Sakura, I know it's hard. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of educator. So I'm gonna direct you to some of our educators in the Geek Squad. So it depends on where you're from. If you can send me a DM, I can direct you to some of the educators in our Geek Squad. Or, um, you know, UA is planning some sort of education coming soon, but like we don't have anything set in timeline. If you can send me a location that you're from, I can give you a little bit more recommendation. And in the future, you guys will find a Geek Squad tab in our website. That's where you can learn about all Geek Squads and then especially the educators and then see if there's any from your cities that you like because they're all UA approved. They're not necessarily teaching a program or curriculum that's built by UA, but I've personally reviewed all of their manual and their curriculum and I know that I stand behind it. Okay, let's see. How to charge your friend that's been seeing you for a long time, switching from a home to a salon. I always tell this to people. A true friend will not only pay you the full amount, they also tip you a lot because that's how you truly support a friend, right? A friend who's always asking for discounts and all that stuff isn't being a true friend to support your business. So, but that doesn't mean that people aren't going to ask for it. They're always going to ask for it. This is a script that I've developed to tell my friends whenever my friends ask for a discount. So let's say your client, your friend asks you for, a, you're switching from home to salon. You tell your friend, okay, now my services are going from $150 to $200 because I have overheads now. So it's gonna be a little bit more expensive. This is my new pricing. And they go, uh, Hang Lu, but I didn't, I was paying 150. Can I just pay 150? Cause I'm your friend, you know, can I get a friend discount? And then this is what you say. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for supporting my business along the way. And I would love for you to continue supporting my business. However, I just don't going forward. I won't have a discount policy. So it wouldn't be fair to my other friends and my other family member that I've seen that are paying full price, but I charge you discounted. And I try to, price my prices super reasonably and I'm not trying to be, you know, unreasonable. So if you need, I have a list of seven people, whatever, that you can go see. And I think that, you know, if my price is now out of your price range, I totally understand because it is a little bit more expensive than before. So I made you a list. These are the people that you can go see. And nine out of 10, they're going to keep seeing you because they don't want to ruin their friendship. Okay. I'm trying to create my own lash brand, at least a local lash artist to begin. Do you have any suggestion in starting a lash brand? Um, lash layer boutique, I would have to say that it's going to be really, really, really hard work. Um, I think the suggestion I have for you is that before getting into committing all that money and time and all that, you need to first figure out what does it takes to get into a supplier and a product company because you are doing something completely different now. It's not even the same ball game. Like you're not even like previously you were playing basketball and now you're like playing chess. Like it's completely different. So make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into and for the right reason. And the next thing I would say is that just try to read a lot of books learn a lot and you know be a self learner and that's the biggest most powerful tool that you can have as an entrepreneur is to be a self learner if you can hone into the skills of learning and being a self learner then nothing will be difficult for you and nothing will become you know a undefeatable feat is that the right word i don't even know but yeah <laughs> so um okay if you are a sole trader would you include your house mortgage and fixed expenses or fall under salaries? So your, um, your mortgage will be actually under your personal expenses. So, and I guess that would consider your salary, but it will be under your personal expenses. I don't know if you've done this already, but could you do a webinar on how to use Canva? Absolutely. I can do that. Um, it will probably be more of a webinar of me winging it and less preparation, but I can definitely show you guys how to use Canva. Do you have a Geek Squad educator in Australia? No, I don't. But I think that if you reach out to, um, ah, actually I do. Completely forgot. So she she's not a geek. She's not an educator yet. She's actually building out her curriculum. But if you guys have seen her, she's been featured a couple of times on our feed. Um, and that's Glam Studios. It's underscore Glam Studio. And if you see it, Jasmine has 
the most, she does the most amazing volume. It's so perfect and flawless. And she's really honing into photography lately as well. So I highly recommend you to reach out to Jasmine. It's underscore glam studio. And if you want, you can just go to our feed and there's one picture with two girls. They're like sisters and they're in this like picture back to back. Um, in that picture, you will find Jasmine's info in there. And she is going to be offering courses soon. And then also, this is not a geek squad, but it's a educator that we work really closely with. It's um, Femme Feisty. So it's Lash Fame and um, her partner. They have this course in, I think it's Queensland. That's where they're from. And we supply all their kit. So um, they're not part of the UA Geek Squad, but they're definitely an educator I stand strongly behind. They do a five-day education course, which is something that we're planning to build out. So I highly, highly, highly recommend you look into that. And then the last person I would recommend is Tyler from Unreal um, Artistry, and she's part of our Geek Squad. I don't know if she's building out a curriculum because she is pretty focused on being the retailer of Untamed Artistry in Australia, but I think she's such a helpful person. If you want to DM her, ask her, she would give her like give you all her suggestions all right so it looks like i've actually answered all of your questions today thank you guys so much for hanging out with me i know there's 44 of you still hanging out and i don't want to keep you guys forever but you know let me see actually in the chat let me see if i have any i missed the info new product i think my phone cut off for 10 minutes liz oh no okay so the product is the unhold uh, unhold it's hold up. It's a new adhesive that we have. It's a slower drying time adhesive or adhesive that is a one second dry time for a higher humidity level. And if you use the code hold up, um, you'll get 50% off. What's your requirement to pick a Geek Squad member? Ooh, I love geeking out on this a little bit, Esther. So here is my requirement for picking out Geek Squad. For those of you who are listening, are curious and want to know, Geek Squad is an extremely internal group what that means is that I handpick every single person in here and they only need to have two qualifications. Number one, it's extremely curious. And number two, it's extremely open-minded. I don't care what, how much experience you have. I don't care what kind of work you do. I don't care what style your preference are. We have artists from eight months experience all the way to 12 years experience. We have artists from 18 years old all the way to 38 years old. So I, the only requirement I look for is for you to show me that you genuinely are curious and a true seeker. So that means you're always asking questions. You're attending webinars like this. You always want to learn more because being part of this geek squad one of the things that we do different than any other geek squad is that we don't trade discount for your social media um, real estate what we're really trading for is your opinions and your knowledge so we essentially act as a mastermind where we teach each other each other it's a peer-to-peer -peer mentorship we do a monthly webinar, uh, not a webinar. It's kind of like a webinar. We do a monthly round table where I facilitate a conversation. We talk everything lashes. And then at the end of it, I do a 30 minutes info session teaching you either on how to use Canva or how to do like presentation webinar, email marketing. Last week, um, I mean, this month we talked about giveaway and there's so much in giveaway, the nuances of giveaway that people just don't know. And I share that privately with my Geek Squad. And that also means that you need to be somebody who is active in the community, who genuinely care and want to talk to people and engage with other people and genuinely love UA most of all. Um, you know, we don't really take any Geek Squad that doesn't use UA products and love UA's product because I don't want you to be a salesman. I want you to be a passionate like advocate of untamed artistry and then lastly is because we share so much opinions and so much of our insights with each other um, you have to be open-minded so that means you have to be brave enough to voice your differences but also kind enough to accept people's um not criticism necessarily but like disagreement on these voices so that's all i'm looking for i'm looking for people who are active kind and open like active open-minded curious and then lastly, it's be kind and want to have fun because that's the essence of UA. It's education and fun. Um, okay. Time, effort, hosting. Yay, thank you guys so much. I wanna see if I miss anything. Uh, all social media manager edit photos or you. I'm very particular about editing my photos. I wonder if they do the whole thing. 
You can hire a social media manager to do whatever you want. If you don't want them to edit a picture, you can edit a picture yourself and you provide them pictures and they will be cheaper, you know? And then whatever they do, they usually come in kind of like an a la carte where you kind of pick what they, you want them to do. So if you don't have a lot of money then just pick the thing that caused you the most amount of pain for now, or if you're particular about certain things and you don't want them to do those things, then you just pick for them to do the things that you want them to do. Um, yes, replay. Replay will be sent out to you guys through email and they will only be, they will be available for a month and then after that, we'll post it on YouTube. Social media, okay. I want to make sure I answer everything. Social media manager, uh, gosh, place your area are low. You have to create an experience for your client, let your work speak for yourself and make it experience that way. Yes. Thanks, Tasha. Such a good answer. Like, you guys got this. You know? Listening during work, someone call me when you announce a new adhesive. How do we access it? All right, Carol, I hope you heard it. It's un, it's hold up, 50% off. You can do it on the website. Huge thank you for webinar. Yay! Thank you so much. Oh, Esther, I'm so glad you joined too. Okay. All right. Everybody seems like you guys are just telling me how much you had fun, how much you enjoy it. I'll let you guys go. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Be sure to check your email. Whenever we announce the next webinar, you will get it in your email first. Bye. Have a good day, everybody.